This is an orientation to computer-based audio recording with Zelda Snargly. The video tutorials will be issued in various series. Series 1 contains seven parts. Part 1, Intro, providing a high-level overview of the recording process. Part 2, Downloading the Cubebase project, providing the procedure to download and save the setup project made available by Zelda Snargly. Part 3, Loading the project in Cubebase. The Zelda Snargly project components required to record your instruments or vocals. Part 4, Studio Setup. Using the dialog window to configure your audio interface. Part 5, Audio Connections. Inputs. Assigning your hardware, audio interfaces, input connections to your Cubebase software. Part 6, Audio Connections. Outputs. Assigning your hardware audio interfaces output connections to your Cubebase software. Part 7, Cubebase Interface Navigation, a listing of Cubebase interface options. Hi folks, welcome to Zelda Snurgly's Castle. I'm Mark Seeley, here with Dan Carrier to provide an overview on how the heck to connect with us musically on the internet. Dan and I created Zelda Snurgly as a music slash video project. From a musical perspective, we will be connecting with musicians far, far away via the internet as you see so often done on YouTube. The challenge, of course, is in bringing musicians with limited background in internet recording quickly down the learning curve to get to the fun part, playing the music itself. Today we want to cover item one, equipment requirements. You will need to select your weapon of choice, your instrument, whether that be vocals, keyboard, guitar, bass, drums, saxophone, whatever. If you can hear it, we can record it. You then need to interface with a computer to have the instrument talk to the computer. For this, we require an interface unit designed for this purpose. An example of this is the Steinberg UR22. You will need a microphone to capture any vocal or mic'd instruments. You will need a set of headphones to serve as a monitor so that you can hear yourself and hear the music you are accompanying. You need a computer that is connectable to the internet. If you want to record yourself and then send a prepackaged track, you will need a recording software. Here we are using Cubebase. A sufficient version of Cubebase comes with the UR22 or can otherwise be purchased. From there, to record live, you will need VST Performer, basically enabling you to set up a musical chat room. Through VST Performer, we can have guitars in Australia, keyboards from Greece, and vocals from Zanzibar, while Dan plays drums here back at the castle. VST Performer is a free download. Item 2, Connections. The instrument is plugged into the front of the interface unit and a USB cable runs from the back connecting to your computer. The various instruments I listed earlier have various output power. For example, a microphone generally features a balanced instrument level signal. The keyboard features a balanced line level signal. The guitar features an unbalanced instrument level signal. The interface unit is designed to compensate for the differences as the signal proceeds to your computer as a recording input. The interface unit also features volume level controls to enable you to adjust the strength of the input signal. You want to ensure you have a sufficient signal to record while ensuring you don't dial up too much power to overdrive what the computer will be looking for, as this causes unwanted distortion. Unless, of course, you are Jimi Hendrix, in which case, fill your boots. Here are two choices of microphones for recording vocals, dynamic and condenser. An example of a dynamic microphone is the Shure SM58, and the example of a condenser microphone is the Rode NT2A. The condenser microphone is the preferred microphone for recording vocals. Please note that the condenser microphone requires phantom power, 48 volts. The plus 48 volt switch is located on the back of the Steinberg UR22C audio interface. 
With the Steinberg DSP Mix app that comes with the Steinberg interface, you can add guitar effects to your sound that can be recorded with the recorded track or can still be used but not recorded. In the same fashion, reverb can also be added to the vocals. Keep in mind, Dan has more effects in his software than you could ever hope to buy at the store. For keyboard recording, you can use the MIDI output on your keyboard connecting to the MIDI input on your interface unit, if it has a MIDI input. This will send to the castle a clean signal registering both left and right channels. Alternatively, you can use the quarter inch keyboard outputs connecting to the interface unit with standard instrument cables. For fine recordings, you will need to hear what you play as you play it, and you will also need to hear what you are playing along with, i.e. the other instruments. For this to sound right, they must be in sync, so that you play the right stuff at the right time. The next item is live recording through the internet. To connect to Australia, Greece, and Zanzibar, and Dan here at the castle for a tumultuous jam, we need VST Performer. Think of it as a musical chat room. This can be downloaded for free. Due to latency issues, we will generally want to do that one-on-one. -on -one. VST Performer will also enable you to talk to and coordinate with Dan back here at the castle. The next item is operating the recording software Cubebase. The weird and wonderful dimensions of Cubebase are addressed in many tutorials available all over the place online. But, to provide my layman's perspective, basically it takes the input signals and positions them within a multitude of tracks that you can arrange, mix, and alter. Main vocal, harmony vocal, guitar, bass, drums, etc., etc., stack vertically as you care to stack them, with each uh, having a dedicated track. The y-axis is tracks, the x-axis is time. So in Cubebase, you can stack the various signals you want in your final composition. You can EQ each independently, set the volumes, and add any effects, for example, a hall reverb for vocals, a distortion for guitar, maybe some compression for the drums, etc., etc. As you record, an image of the signal is visibly progressing from left to right with time, as you see with, for example, a heart monitor. And Dan can probably hook that up as well. By shifting the signal left or right during mixing, Dan can ensure the signals are in sync, compensating for that latency. From there, all you need is a post office box to receive the huge checks that reflect your prowess as a budding rock star. That brings us to wardrobe. As part of the WAV file you can produce for Dan, we can mix into the final composition a visual. We can take a video signal as well. For this, you will need to select the clothes you care to wear that reflect your mood. Doesn't really matter what they are as long as you have some. Dan and I hope that the last 20 minutes of your life were worthwhile, and we look forward to linking up with you musically here at Zelda Snarglies Castle. If you are having trouble with any of the foregoing, stop and ask a child. They seem to have it all figured out. Bye for now. The next video in the recording with Zelda Snarly Series 1 is Part 2, Downloading the Cubebase Project.